Hi guys, it's Ben here, back with a preview for Liverpool's next game. It's against Burnley in the Premier League after another disappointing result against Sevilla. A 2 all draw to follow up that 5-0 hammering at the hands of Manchester City. We needed to bounce back against Sevilla, we didn't. So this is the game, this becomes the crucial one. This is obviously the more important one. We need to get back to winning ways in the league. Can't afford to drop points two games in a row. Burnley at home should be straightforward. It's a game we've, you know, we won it last season, we won it last time. We played them in the Premier League before that as well. So, should be routine. But how can you guarantee that? How can you guarantee that with this, this Liverpool side, so error prone in defence, <sighs> not clinical either to be honest with you, and especially with Sadio Mane out of the side, uh, who knows what sort of creativity we're going to have. Coutinho, I imagine, will come back in, hopefully, uh, and I imagine he'll start on the left hand side of that front three. So there should still be plenty of goal scoring prowess in Liverpool's side, but Burnley are going to be tough customers. They won at Stamford Bridge on the opening day of this season. They beat Crystal Palace at home last week. They got strikers in good form. Chris Wood, who's a player that I've always liked at Leeds, um, a player that I thought might end up at an even bigger club than Burnley, but he's gone there and he started off well. A couple of goals in his first two games for them, one against Tottenham at Wembley, of course, so he's not afraid to do on a big stage. Age, whether he can do it at Anfield, I'm not sure. Um, one thing that will be interesting, Burnley obviously played 4-4-2 against Crystal Palace with both Vokes and Wood up front. Whether they go for it at Anfield and do that again, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, if you leave yourself exposed with a, the 4-4-2 formation, um, that can obviously be a, a risk against a side with such creativity and pace and tempo like Liverpool. But putting both Wood and Vokes against our uncertain defence might pay, pay dividends. Maybe they'll wait until the end to bring the big guns on to do that. Jonathan Walters is another one they might consider. He's a man with a great record against Liverpool, someone we famously struggled against when he was at Stoke. So that might be something for Sean Dyche to consider. It's not going to be straightforward. They're a good side. They're well organised. Um, good in the air. <laughs> All things we struggled to play against. Uh, and without Sadio Mane, it's going to be far from a walk in the park. But a win here would bring us back to two points a game. It would make it a decent start. Not a great one, but five games 10 points is an okay base to build upon going into you know the next part next phase of the campaign after the starts after the signings are all settled in you move into the next phase you settle into Europe and this is this is a game we can we can seriously win and then you go into Leicester not not the cup game the, the Leicester league game the Newcastle league game another chance to get at least four to six points uh, and then you start to think about you know mounting a challenge so this is obviously a crucial one goes out saying we've not won in the last two games so need to put that right and the starting lineup that I would go with what I think we're going to go with uh, is Simon Minnelli in goal, of course, and then Trent Alexander Arnold taking his place back at right back. Um, Gomez didn't have the best night uh, against Sevilla, got sent off, had an okay game according to some. I don't think he was that great myself. Uh, neither was Joel Matip, who I've seen some people again praise quite highly after Sevilla. For me, he wasn't good enough again. Um, Oh, who would you pick alongside Matip? You probably have to go with Dayan Lovren, despite his errors in midweek. And then, look, Andrew Robertson for me. Let's play him again. Why not? He played really well against Crystal Palace, which is a similar sort of fixture against a side that we're always going to sit in. Um, his delivery is fantastic. He's more solid defensively than Moreno, even if it is only slightly. He's not going to make any stupid challenges like Moreno did in the second half against Sevilla, although Moreno was explosive in that first half. Very, very impressive. I want to see Andrew Robertson giving a go here. I'd rather see James Milner than Moreno, to be honest, just for a bit of safety um, against Goodmanson, who I think is actually a good right midfielder for them. Uh, in midfield, now I think we need to change at least one of these players. I thought we were going to do it against Sevilla. We didn't. Uh, we went with the Henderson, Chan, Van Adam trio. I think one of them needs to drop out, and I think Emre Chan might be the one to do so. Uh, I can't see Klopp dropping his captain, and Van Adam's one of the three that is like most probably most likely to score, especially at home against a side like Burnley, a team he scored against last season. So I think Alex Oxley Chamberlain is going to come into that midfield with Henderson and. Uh, Vinaldum, uh, he deserves a start in my book. He did well when he came on against Sevilla, even if it was only for a few minutes. But he is going to be hungry. He's going to have a bit between his teeth, uh, and I want to see him in action in his preferred centre midfield position against a side we need to break down with pace, uh, with panache, with power. Uh, let's hope he can do that. On the right, of course, Mohamed Salah, um, cutting in from the inside, being that constant threat, he's a no-brainer. On the left, Philip Coutinho, welcome back. Get yourself in that team, get yourself scoring some goals, get yourself with the three balls through to the likes of Roberto Firmino, who will, of course, start up front. And now, as for Burnley, will they go for the 4-4-2? I actually think they might bring Arfield back in, or another midfielder, maybe, to shore things up. And as I said, bring uh, Vokes on towards the end to, to partner up with Chris Wood, maybe even bring Walters on at some point too. Um, but it's going to be very much attack versus defence. We have to watch ourselves on set pieces whenever they do get one. Um, they're a very big side, um, but I think we can exploit that defence of theirs, which isn't particularly 
uh, great. They've obviously lost Michael Keane. Uh, Tarkovsky's come back in. I actually thought he played well against Palace. Uh, I thought Burnley as a whole played very well against Palace. Robbie Brady was good. Stephen Ward was okay. But th this sort of calibre of players, we should be brushing aside. The bookies think we're huge favourites. We're something like 1-4 to four with most bookies. You can get 10-1, to one, I've seen, for Burnley to win. I think I've even seen 12-1 to one somewhere. The draw's around 5-1, to one, so do I back one of those results and uh, you know, win either way, as you might think. But um, look, of course I want this win. I I, I think it would be a real panic, a real bad mood around the place if we failed to get the win here. Um, it would be typical, typical Liverpool, the way we dropped so many points last season against this calibre opposition at home. We dropped points against Sevilla when we were on top, we've got to put our chances away. And the responsibility lies with the strikers, just as it does the defenders. The defenders obviously are our weakest link, and they're the ones that are going to cost us by conceding one or two stupid goals, but the strikers need to... <laughs> Their responsibility is now to score three or four, which they are fully capable of doing, but they need to do against this Burnley side, who aren't obviously going to match that sort of goal-scoring tally for us. So my prediction is going to be a 4-2 Liverpool win. Uh, I'm going for high scoring. I think they're going to be tough. I think they might even take a lead, Burnley. Uh, but we've got so much quality, especially if Coutinho back in the side. I think Oxley Chamberlain's going to start and do well. Um, he's going to want to prove why he should be in the starting eleven. So uh, maybe he'll get on the score sheet as well. Let's go for Oxley Chamberlain to score. Let's go for Coutinho to score on his return to the starting eleven. Let's go for Mohamed Salah and let's go for Roberto Firmino in a 4-2 Liverpool win. I'd take that absolutely, of course. Get to that three points. Get to two points a game go to the Carabao Cup uh, and we go from there. Um, guys, leave a comment with your score prediction. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff. Drop a like, share the video for me and follow my other socials too. It's Ben Might Say on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. See you next time.